Hi, welcome to the second session on product topology and Tikhonov's theorem. I already recorded one video. I had to abandon it, uh, discard it because when I sh tried to share the screen, whatever I wrote about toward the last 15% of the right side was not visible. Okay, so I am trying to re-record. When I say to you, trying to re-record, it's not like cinema songs or whatever the songs re-recorded because the song will remain the same. <laughs> but my lecture, okay, will be again new one. Okay, I cannot say that it will be 100% whatever I lecture in, in the original recording. Okay, but it will be interesting. Okay, okay, let us get started. Yeah, right. Just as usual, this is my ch channel. Okay, and why? If at all you want to send me any comment or suggestions, please send it to this. Anything related to my video channel, please do it. Okay, you can download the list of videos of my channel from this thing. Okay, search for list of videos. You can also scan it, and uh, it's more or less periodically updated so for example the latest one will have to complex analysis okay all the topologies will also be there okay let us get started okay this is just i was testing whether the whole thing works okay so don't worry about this oh my gosh i had gone so many pages I didn't even realize. Okay, right. So, what we did in the last lecture was the following. Okay, let xi tau i be topological spaces. Okay, let product xi equal to x. Then, we are looking for the smallest topology on x which is product x i so that for each i in i the projection map pi i from x to x i okay this is x2 tau p and x i to tau i is continuous the key word is smallest topology so what we notice what the smallest topology exists exists okay and call it tau p okay topology product okay and remember if i take any open set ui in tau i then the pi i inverse of ui must be in tau p okay so this is a necessary condition therefore what we said is okay let us look at the smallest topology which okay let us say tau a which contains a where a is by definition pi a inverse of ui where ui is in tau i and i varies over all i to so take any i take all possible open sets in tau i and take the inverse image pi a inverse of such ui's and give this collection okay so what we want to claim is this tau a will be tau p and we want a concrete description claim and a concrete description notice that if you had followed my lectures okay about basis etc and uh, generating topologies okay i had given explicitly but let me uh, go through this okay very quickly so what i want is claim is i am going to define tau a how do i define to define it is an open set u in x sorry it's a subset of x so that for every x in u what do i want there exists a finite set f and and for each i in f i have an open set ui in tau i and so that my x belong to intersection of pi i inverse of ui where i varies only over this finite set and this should be contained in u 
okay oh again just don't be overwhelmed suppose these are okay let me just look at this okay so these are the things which are in i okay so this i i i this i these eyes are in f okay then what am i taking i am taking open sets u i here okay now what do i want you you start with any x in u u is an op set subset of x okay these are all my x eyes okay these are all my u eyes right so what do i want i want to say when u is open for each n x this is like finding a basis right what do i want there is a finite subset f of i and open sets u i in tau i so that x belong to intersection of pi i inverse of u i okay and this set is contained in a okay what i want to prove is i want to prove the okay this is this is a topology i want to let me call it tau p itself okay i claim tau p is a topology is the smallest topology said so that pi i from x tau p to x i tau i is continuous okay so let us claim first tau p is a topology okay empty set of course belong to tau p because take u equal to empty set if you give me an x i have to produce so it is backwardsly true okay right and x also is in tau p that is very clear right if you give me any x i only have to take some open set namely take x i itself okay that's it and this in it will be there okay right are you following you give me any x in capital x right what do i want just to fix any i and take any ui in tau i then pi i inverse of ui there is only one my f is consists of only single tau i then my x belong to this yeah this the said that this is pi i of x equal to xi this is in ui right take any open set fix an i i in sorry okay. fix i in i and take an open set ui in tau i so that pi i of x namely x i belong to ui and let my capital f equal to singleton i okay then x belong to this why because this belong to this if only pi i of x must be in ui that is given right and that of course is a subset of x okay therefore this to are true and th third thing suppose ui sir suppose u alpha is open <coughs> and tau p okay for some indexing set alpha okay lambda then i have to say union u alpha alpha and lambda whether this is in tau p that is again easy why because you start with an x here right then x belong to there is an alpha so that x belong to u alpha since x belong to u alpha and u alpha belong to tau p right what do i know there exists a finite subset x even i and open set ui in tau i so that pi a of x belong to ui and x belong to intersection i in f of pi a inverse of ui but that is contained in u alpha but that u alpha is contained in union of u alpha alpha in lambda this is lambda okay okay then let's look at intersection suppose u and v belong to tau p right so if u intersection v is empty nothing to prove so i assume x belong to u intersection v right then since x belong to u okay there exists let us say ui i running over some finite set okay let us let me say a is a finite subset of i finite 
answer that x belong to intersection pi i inverse of u i i in a and that is contained in u and similarly x is in b there exists u j j belong to b b is a finite set right so that x belong to intersection j in b of pi j inverse of u j and that is contained in b right now what obvious thing is x belong to let c equal to a union b this is a finite subset of y therefore x belong to intersection okay r in c so that pi r inverse of u r and that is contained in u intersection b is that clear so tau p is a topology pause review proceed next i want to prove okay tau p is a that each of the projection pi i from x tau p to x i tau y is continuous okay how do i prove that that is by very definition to prove this is continuous what i have to do you start with any ui in tau y i have to check whether pi i inverse of ui is in tau p but that's by very definition right because what does tau p consists of okay this is in tau p because are you following yeah tau p has in fact you i should remark okay note that if u belong to tau p then u is the union of let me say u x where u x is intersection i over f x of pi i inverse of u i what do i mean let me make the point very clear if this belong to this what do i know for each x in u there exists a finite set let me call this a finite set as a finite set and open set ui in tau y for i in fx so that what happens x belong to intersection i over fx of pi i inverse of ui and that is contained in u is that clear to all yeah so let me call u x to be this set right therefore what do i know okay so what do i know my u is union of u x as x there is over u okay next each of these fellows is open because my tau p contains all these intersections u x right therefore what we have is pi i from x tau p to x i tau y is continuous for all i okay pause review proceed so just to make sure notice that for each i in i and u i in tau y pi i inverse of u i this is in tau p because if you give me any x here i can take my f to be singleton i and u i to be this then x belong to pi i inverse of u i which is contained in pi i inverse of u i actually it's equal to <coughs> right okay and since i already proved tau p is a topology i am just going back and forth so that i want you to become comfortable okay don't get confused so for each i pi i inverse of ui belong to tau p 
and this already we know is the topology. Therefore, any finite main intersection pi i inverse of ui, i varying over any finite set, this is also in top view. Okay. Right. Okay. Now I want to see the okay tau p is the smallest topology with this property. With the property, what is the property? Pi i from x tau p to x i tau i is continuous. Okay, we know tau i tau p is the topology, so that this becomes continuous. We want to say it's the smallest topology. So let tau be a topology on product x i which is equal to x such that pi i from x tau to x i tau i is continuous. Then what do I have to prove? We want to prove tau p is contained in tau. Right? Okay. How do I prove that? The first thing is notice that okay for each i and u i in tau i okay pi i inverse of u i belong to tau because this is continuous therefore u i is an open set here its inverse must be open here therefore it belongs to tau right therefore what do I know what I know is that this belongs to tau and hence okay intersection pi i inverse of u i i varying over f this is this belong to tau for every finite set f of i because tau is these are all open sets finite intersection of open sets is open therefore these are all open right now what do i know give me any u in tau p we already saw u equal to union of u x x in u and what is u x for each x we know there is an f x a finite set and open set u i in tau i for i in f x so that u x equal to intersection i over f x of pi i inverse of u i and x belong to this of course and that is contained in u right therefore u is union on u x but what is union on u x u x is this pi intersection each of them are in tau therefore this union is in tau therefore u in tau p implies u is in tau therefore that implies tau p is contained in tau okay so pause review proceed okay so how do i look at whether some set is open or not what i all i have to look at is i will look at only two things if you give an x okay x and u then what i have to look at is i have to find a finite subset f of i okay so that these are i and open sets ui and my xi must be here somewhere here that's all so for x has to be an open set okay x must satisfy only finite many condition namely there should exist a finite subset i and open set ui for each i in f so that my pi i of x must be in ui that's all for i in f that's what i mean by it must satisfy finite many condition try to go through two or three times so that you become comfortable because i know many students in fact I'm sorry to say even many teachers are not very comfortable with this notion because they just look at the definition of immediately they will go to the theorem they get confused so take some time to work it work these things okay right now I want to prove a result which will be a telling result okay let us I suppose infinite the indexing set is infinite okay 
and for each i in i let me choose an open set which is proper then product ui i in i is not open that is product ui i in i is not in the product topology okay this is the first we want to say these are these are all small observations to make you understand how to look at the product topology and the open sets in the product topology so unlike finite product you know if you x1 x2 xn are thing and u1 u2 n are any open sets in x1 x2 xn then product ui will be open but that's not the case with infinite product okay right why this is not open so let us understand therefore so so let x suppose u equal to product ui i and i is open okay then what do i know let x belong to u remember these uis are non empty therefore i can all this is non empty therefore the x is an x an element x these are this involve axiom of choice but let's not worry about such things let x belong to u therefore since u is open okay okay there exists a finite set of in i finite and open set ui in tau i for i in f so that my x belong to where intersection pi a inverse of i in f ui and that should be contained in u is that clear at all right now if you think geometrically you see this absurd this cannot happen why let me look at this so this is my thing okay these are my eyes in here okay these are the open sets okay now what are these things this one you know is a product of vj j in i so that vj equal to xj if j is not in f and equal to ui uj if j is in f so at all other places these are the things it has to be very full so you can see this is a much much bigger set very huge set okay now this also gives me how to give a problem right you understand yeah. understand geometrically now i'll give a rigorous proof right now start with a j so let j be in i which is not in f and since f is finite i is infinite this is non empty therefore there is a j right now let us assume this is my j right now there is a uj and remember this uj is not empty and it's not all of x that means there is some yj here okay there is a yj which is in xj minus uj right now can now let's look at an element yi so that yi equal to xi if i is not equal to j and equal to yj if i equal to j you understand that so at all other points what i am going to take is i am going to take elements of this kind but whereas this is the element i am going to take you understand that now notice that this element this y belong to pi i inverse of ui i in f why if this happens if and only if pi i of y must be in ui pi i of y is yi okay right 
and where is i i is in f when i is in f okay notice that it must be xi right when i is in f then i cannot be j since i is not equal to j then y is equal to xi therefore this is in j right therefore it's in u i this is true for all i in f right therefore y belong to this but y does not belong to u which is product of ui why because this happens if it happens if if y belong to u then pi j of y must be new j right but that is yj that means yj is in uj but how did i choose my yj not in so this is a contradiction therefore okay hence the claim so go through the proof is right isn't the proof easy and every time remember this is what you have to learn the only way to work with product topology is look at the basic open sets okay by the way pi i inverse of ui these are called sub basic open sets and pi i intersections are called basic open sets okay so the only way to look at work with product topology is whenever i have an open set and x has to be in u then x has to satisfy only finitely many conditions okay if i, if I write x equal to xi okay so only for finitely many i's xi has to be in some special thing otherwise x xi could be any element of capital xi okay there are only finitely many conditions please go through it we will look at lot of examples this is the best way to master product topology so whatever i said let me make a thing because it will be used often okay pi a inverse of ui they are called sub basic open sets of course what is i is an i and u is an tau etc i do not keep claiming that and this pi a inverse of ui i in f where f is a finite subset of okay then these are all called basic open sets why are they called basic open sets because u belong to tau p if and only if u is union of such elements okay union of such objects okay therefore these elements are the product okay topology therefore a basis product product topology is pi i sorry pi i inverse of ui i in f where f in f is finite and for each i in f u is r in tau i that's all so finite sets can vary but even for the same finite set my u is may vary and take this finite intersection this is the basis okay let us prove a first lemma okay let xi tau i be hausdorff then product topology xi with the tau p is hausdorff the proof is extremely simple okay so let us start with the two elements okay x y in the product and say so that x is not equal to y so what does that mean this means there is a j in i said so that x j is not equal to y j remember x and y are functions and if x is not equal to y that means there is a j in i said so that x at j is not equal to y at j but that is same as saying x j is not equal to y j right now 
where do the elements xj oj belong they belong to capital xj okay what do i know about this this is a hausdorff space therefore what do i know so again a picture will make life easy this is my xj okay sorry this is my j this is my xj and these are the two open elements Now, therefore, there is an open set here. Okay, U J, V J, and tau J. Say that X J belong to U J, Y J belong to V J. This is U, and say that U J intersection V J is empty. Right? Now, what do I do? Let U equal to pi J inverse of U J. And v equal to pi j inverse of v j. You follow that? So what are all the open sets? Again, I have a picture in mind. This will be a, so for all i, I am going to take the full i, x i, right? These are all i which are not equal to j. I am going to take full i. Okay. So this fellow will contain everywhere full x i, but when it comes to j, it will contain only this element, this open set, right? And this one the same way, okay? This will hunt for i not equal to j. It will contain all full x i. When it comes to j, it will contain only this v j. So this is u j, and this is v j, right? Now I claim u intersection v is empty. Okay, first x belong to u. Is that clear? If x belong to u, if only if pi j of x belong to u j, but that is okay because that is x j belong to u j. Okay. Similarly, y belong to v. That is if only pi of y belong to v j. That is y j belong to v j. v j. And I want to claim u intersection v is empty. That is very easy. Suppose yes, z belong to this, right? Okay. I want to prove this. Suppose not true, there is z. Then pi j of z must be in u, and pi j of z must be in v. Sorry, u j. So okay, let me say. Sorry, pi. Therefore, that means z belong to u and z belong to v. Therefore, that means pi j of z belong to pi j of u, and pi j of z belong to pi j of v. But what is pi j of u? This is z j. Yeah. That belong to u j, and this z j which belong to v j. That means u j intersection v j is not empty. This is a contradiction. Yeah, if it is there, if, again if you want a pictorial thing, suppose there is a z, okay, and then that z has to be here, okay. When I come to z j, it has to be in this, and it has to be in this. So that's a contradiction. Okay, again pause, review, proceed. The next result So let us look at xk a sequence in product xi of course product topology okay let me write xk as let me write x alpha i don't want i alpha we are using indexing set Okay, I will write it xk alpha. That is xk at alpha. xk has to be a function from i to union x alpha such so that xk at alpha, which is x alpha, belong to sorry xk of alpha belong to u alpha. Yeah. Is that okay? Right. Now suppose xk converges to x, which is in product topology x alpha. 
Therefore, x also I can write as x alpha. Right? So, uh, remember in R2, we have the result. If xn, yn converges to xy, you put only xn converges to x and yn converges to y. Right? So, that's what we want to prove. So, we want to say x a converges to x, if and only if for each alpha, they look at x k alpha converges to x alpha. Okay. Let us look at a picture, something like this. This is my x k. So, this is my x k alpha. This is alpha the coordinate. And this is my x, which is something, this is alpha the coordinate. So, what do I need is this sequence converges to this sequence, this sequence converges to this sequence, this sequence converges to this sequence. So, coordinate wise convergence is what we want. Is that clear to all? So, it is, I want to say if it is for no leaf. One way is easy. Okay, pause, review, proceed. Understand this statement. One way is easy. If x k converges to x, that means pi alpha x k converges to pi alpha x, which is x k alpha converges to x alpha. Why? Because this is again a general result. Okay, if you have seen my continuity, okay, video, then you will know that in the general topology course. Okay, if f is a function from x to y. And if xn is a sequence converged to x, suppose this is a continuous function, then f of xn converged to fx in y. Okay, the proof is easy. Let us quickly go through this proof. Okay, so let us start with an open set V which contains fx. Right now, since f is continuous, then there is let this u be f inverse of v. Then this is open. And notice that since x belong to v, yeah, sorry, fx belong to v, x belong to u. Because x belong to u, if and only if fx belong to v. That is a correct statement. Therefore, x is here. Now, since xn converges to x, there is a capital N so that for all k greater than or equal to capital N, my xk lie here. Okay? That means my, all my xk lie for k greater than equal to n, x k lie in f inverse of v, that means f of x k lies in v. For all k greater than equal to n, f, x, f of x k lies in v, that means the sequence f x k converges to f x. Right? Now, product topology is the one such that pi alpha from x to tau p to x alpha tau alpha is continuous. Now, you say x k converge to x here, therefore, pi alpha of x k should converge to pi alpha of x, but that is nothing other than x k alpha converge to x k as k tends to infinity. Okay? So, pause, review, proceed. Did you notice something interesting? As usual, I did not quote this result we had already seen, I went through the proof this proof. Right? This is what I keep saying. Whenever some small thing comes, stop there and try to go through the proof, so that you become master. At any time, you do not have to remember. You will be able to prove on your own. Okay. Converse. What is the converse? For each alpha, x k alpha converges to x k, x alpha. So, what do you have to prove? Then, x k converges to x. Right? So, to prove x k converges to x, what do I have to do? I have to start with an open set containing, suppose u is an open set, x belong to u and this belong to tau p. Since x, u is an open set, therefore, I know there exists a finite subset f of i, right, and open set u i in tau i, so that x belong to intersection i in f. You see that how many times I use it? Pi i inverse of u i and that is contained in u. Right? Okay. Is that clear? Right. Now, I am going to make use of that. Now, let us look at, I. you told me x k converges, sorry, x k alpha 
yeah oh sorry this is alpha let me show it okay alpha 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 okay you told me xk alpha converges to x alpha right so <coughs> for each alpha in f okay there is an n alpha so that if k is greater than or equal to n alpha then what do i know about xk alpha that belong to u alpha because u alpha contains x alpha right and there's an open set therefore xk alpha after k sufficiently large must lie here right but how many such n alpha i have only finitely many therefore let n equal to maximum of n alpha okay since notice that finite ones how we are using therefore for every k greater than or equal to n and for every alpha in f what do i have xk alpha belong to u alpha right i chose okay there is an n so that this is that clear right now let's see i claim my for all k greater than or equal to n my xk lies in, in intersection alpha in f pi alpha inverse of u alpha and hence that contains u contained in u right now when does this happen this happens if and only if pi alpha of xk should be in u alpha for every alpha in f but this is nothing other than that is for all k greater than equal to n that is same as for all k greater than equal to n xk alpha belong to u alpha for every alpha in f but that's what we saw therefore what i have shown I have shown that x k converges to x. Given x k alpha converges to x alpha for every alpha, then you have proved it. So pause, review, proceed. The final result is actually one can call it a theorem. It is also so known as universal mapping property. Do not worry about this. in another video i would explain about these things okay now let y tau y if you want be a topological space let f from y tau y to product x i and tau p okay be given okay is a map okay once this is given note that okay so for each y f of y is going to be product xi right product xi therefore f of y is going to be some xi okay is something strange right if not f of y is equal to y but f of y equal to xi right how what is this xi notice this xi is nothing other than pi i of f of y you understand that Yeah, because the x i is the i th component. How do I get the i th component of this vector? Yeah, this is not this vector. Sorry, this element of y by projecting by pi i. So I got it. All right. Therefore, it be call as f i of y. What is f i? F i is pi i composite of. Right. So those of you who may struggle, let us say if x to r n. then f of x is a vector therefore call it y1 to yn okay then i call this as f f1 of x and f1 of y how did i get f1 of x f1 of x is the first coordinate of fx how do i get the first coordinate of fx pi1 of fx that is everything so my f1 is nothing other than pi1 composite of and so on you understand so similarly here is it all right okay so now let's look at is that clear therefore f of y is going to be f y of y where what is f y f y is nothing other than pi y composed of all right now suppose f is continuous then we know pi y is continuous because of product topology therefore the composite which is f y which is pi y of f 
is continuous. Is that clear? Yeah. So f continuous implies each of the component function. Therefore, if I write f is f y, okay, that is f of y equal to f y of y, okay. F is continuous implies f each component function, okay. Let me call ith component. Okay, it is continuous, right? So I can ask whether converse is true. What is the converse? So let f be from y tau y to product xi tau p, and let me write f as f of y as f i of y, where f i is pi i composite f. Okay, and assume for each i in i, f i is continuous. Okay, is f continuous. Okay, are you reminded of a result? Okay, you might have seen f from r to r n or r m to r n. Okay, you write f of x equal to f one of x f n f x then f is continuous if only if each f y is continuous right so this is similar result so we want to prove f is continuous if only if each f y is continuous so we proved f is continuous implies each f y is continuous now let's assume each f y is continuous I want to say f is continuous okay so to prove f is continuous. So, I shall prove f is continuous at x. Some x in capital X. Okay, arbitrary x. Right? To prove f x is continuous, what is that I have to do? Remember, where, again let me recall, f from x to y, when do I say, this is not the same notation, do not get confused. X, sorry, f is continuous, each y in capital Y. <laughs> okay? Let me write y to x. <laughs> Okay, when do I say f is continuous at y? Look at an open set which contains f y. This is f y. Then I have to find an open set which contains y so that for each y dash here, f y dash lies here. That is f of is contained in v. Is it clear? Okay, so let us look at f y. Now f y belongs to product x i. Therefore, I have to start with an open set. So, let me start with the basic open set. Okay. Let f in i be finite and u i is in tau i so that let y belong to intersection i in f i in f pi i inverse of u i. Sorry, f of y. Again, I am making a mistake. You understand that? Yeah, right. What is that I have to do? I have to find. So I have to. So what do you have to do? Need to find a b in tau of y, so that y belong to b, and so that for every z in v, f of z belong to intersection i in f pi i inverse of u y. Is that clear? That's what then I know that f is continuous at y. Okay? Right. How do I prove that? Now notice that okay, let us look at u i i in f. Now pi a of y, call it y i, that belong to this. Now pi a of sorry. I am very, very sorry. Pi a of f y. That is f i f y. Belong to u i. Right now, what do I know about f i? f i is from y tau y to x i tau y is continuous. Therefore, f i is continuous at y. Okay, and you given me an open set. 
ui here therefore there exists an open set vi in tau y so that y belong to vi and what happened f i of vi is contained in ui that is for every z in vi f i of z belong to ui is that clear pause review proceed you should not get confused with the notation if the ideas are clear notations are easy to generate and write right so what i have is i have y here okay i have a lot of open sets okay my y is always here these are my various open sets vi for i in f therefore let my take v equal to vi i in f notice that this f is finite the vi's are open in y therefore this is open in y right now start with any z here then what happens if i observe okay right i claim now claim okay f of z belong to intersection i in f pi a inverse of ui okay when does this belong to this this happens if and only if for each i pi a of f of z must be in ui but this is if and only for all i in i f i of z must be in ui but that's very clear because z is where is z z is intersection of vi in particular z is in vi and what did we see about vi if z is in vi f i of z belong to ui therefore i have shown that for all i this okay so what is the conclusion now the conclusion is okay f is continuous at z continuous at y right and y was arbitrary therefore i proved f is continuous on y so please go through this and the only way not to be intimidated by the notation is go through the first session where i talked about only cartesian product of sets and gave you some how to work with it okay and go through these three examples okay actually four examples product of ui is not open if ui is are proper non empty open sets okay and second thing is hausdorff's third thing is continuity right is it all okay three things i forget how many please go through these things and you will become very very comfortable after this you will find the tikhonov theorem is very simple and let me be again i assure you many people struggle with tikhonov theorem because they learn the product topology immediately they look at yeah, the basic open set product topology is this and then try to directly prove tikhonov theorem but they have not become comfortable with that note notion and notation how to work with product topology so these three examples teach you how to train you how to work with product topology once you master this you will find the rest of the things things are very easy i hope you appreciate this we'll meet again thank you bye